So, um, hello everybody, my name is uh, Alexander Felfernig. I am from the uh, Graz University of Technology and uh, I'm uh, the head of the uh, research group um, Applied Software Engineering and Artificial Intelligence. And uh, I want to say uh, many thanks uh, for being invited uh, to this talk uh, at the workshop. So it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor for me. And uh, the focus of this talk will be uh, machine learning techniques in uh, constraint solving. So as said, uh, our research group is uh, Applied Software Engineering and Artificial Intelligence, and uh, we are basically working in this area. So it, uh, we are working on uh, different challenges, tasks in the context of knowledge-based uh, configuration, the systems we build, uh, the, al the algorithms we design, are in uh, many cases based on uh, constraint solving. So this is also uh, one of the motivations for our work on integrating machine learning with constraint solving. We are uh, building recommender systems, knowledge-based recommender systems. Uh, again, uh, we have the issue of applying and integrating and developing different uh, types of machine learning approaches in order to make uh, to calculate these uh, recommendations. You might know those systems from Amazon.com. So uh, users who um, purchased item A also purchased item B. That's a very simple example of a, a colorative filtering recommender system. And our focus in this context is to build such systems, but on the basis of uh, constraint-based technology. So it also makes sense to personalize the user interaction with constraint-based systems. We are also focusing on different topics in the context of automated testing and debugging of knowledge bases, specifically um, CSPs. So uh, if CSPs become inconsistent, uh, the question is, what is the reason for the inconsistency? And in this context, we apply uh, uh, and develop different types of uh, model-based diagnosis algorithms that help us to figure out uh, what is uh, uh, the root cause of an inconsistency. We are focusing on explanations, specifically explanations in terms of uh, conflict in the knowledge base and in terms of uh, uh, hitting sets. And in all these areas, we are basically uh, trying to integrate different kinds of uh, machine learning approaches to personalize uh, the interaction with the user to make uh, reasoning more efficient, um, also to figure out the most uh, relevant faulty constraints in a knowledge base and uh, to present explanations of uh, relevance, for example, for a user who is uh, interacting with a constraint-based system. In this context, we have published uh, a couple of books. Uh, so a good summarization of our work and also a positioning of our work is so we are basically trying uh, to integrate uh, symbolic AI approaches, so for example, configuration constraint solving uh, with sub-symbolic AI, which is uh, more or less associated with uh, the topic of machine learning. So we try to exploit uh, synergy effects between uh, those two areas, and this is uh, a major motivation of our work. So what is the motivation for applying uh, machine learning in the context of uh, constraint solving? Let us have uh, a look at the domain of knowledge-based configuration. So uh, configuration problems can be represented in terms of CSPs, uh, SAT problems, answer set programs, and different other types of knowledge representations. Sometimes we are in the lucky situation that we already have interaction logs, which are basically representing um, interactions of users already uh, existing configurations we are able to exploit uh, for machine learning purposes. I will talk about this uh, in a few seconds. A configuration task can be uh, represented as a CSP. So we have uh, variables, we have domain definitions, then we have uh, constraints describing uh, the product and we have in this simple scenario uh, constraints uh, describing user requirements in more uh, elaborated settings. We are talking about uh, preferences, but for uh, uh, reasons of simplicity, I uh, will omit this aspect here. So 
A configuration problem can be, for example, a car configuration problem. So uh, a user in is interacting uh, with a configurator and tries uh, to configure a car, So, which means the user can select an engine type uh, and further other features he or she wants to include or not include. In this context, it could be the case that the user is not the expert, so he would like to know from the system which engine should I choose, or the user is not interested in his key bag, he's not interested in skiing. So what are the, the most relevant alternatives to of configurations that do not include the ski bag? Um, it could be the case that the user specifies requirements which cannot be supported by the configurator, so there exists no solution and we should be able to figure out which are the most relevant uh, repairs uh, of the user requirements in such a way that the solution can be found. In the context of reconfiguration, we might want to figure out if a specific new feature uh, is relevant for a user, so should it be uh, recommended to the user or not. For sure, we are interested in configurators, especially in interactive settings that are highly efficient. And uh, it would be also be nice to know uh, if we take a look at the CSP, the basic definitions, is this uh, consistent or inconsistent? And if possible, without the effort of uh, activating a, a constraint solver that uh, um, basically provides uh, this answer, but potentially with a lot of uh, search effort. So these are all questions we are interested in. It's a kind of uh, example set of questions. There are many more. Uh, such questions and for all those questions uh, one answer is machine learning so machine learning can uh, help us to answer these questions in an efficient and intuitive fashion and in a fashion that is also satisfactory uh, for a user interacting with a constraint-based system so in this talk i uh, will focus on the discussion of some uh, example machine learning tasks. I will uh, talk about different approaches to integrate uh, machine learning with uh, constraint solving. Uh, many of you might know those metrics. This is a very short overview of uh, basic evaluation metrics that can be applied to evaluate the impact of uh, machine learning. I will go a little bit beyond CSPs. Uh, so I will also talk about the integration of machine learning into uh, model-based uh, diagnosis tasks and uh, finally I will conclude the talk with uh, uh, open research issues and um, so what is what are uh, highly relevant issues uh, one could work on if he or she is interested in this topic of integrating machine learning with uh, constraint solving. So what you see here is uh, a collection of uh, basic machine learning tasks. Um, it's uh, simply not possible to talk about all the different variants and nuances. So I uh, decided to uh, mention uh, representative ones, uh, especially uh, machine learning tasks that are um, based on the assumption that we have some kind of uh, data set, uh, the machine learning algorithm. Uh, can be applied on. So I'm, I'm talking uh, in this context about um, supervised uh, machine learning tasks. But for sure, uh, in the, these tasks in, in one way or another, uh, depending on the scenario, can also be um, uh, interpreted as uh, unsupervised machine learning in the case that uh, user interaction data, uh, a learning data set is not available. So the first task is solution search. So um, we can assume that we have a history of uh, uh, CSP solving sessions. So we have uh, from each session, we have the CSP uh, meta information. We know about selected algorithm and we know about uh, the resulting runtime performance. This is the input of the machine learning algorithm. The output is always a model. So in this case, the output could be a model of a a context dependent uh, algorithm selection heuristic selection approach. Um, another task is uh, recommending solutions. So, uh, again, we can assume the existence of a data set with uh, CSP solutions. So, for example, it could be consistent uh, configurations, so configurations built by users of a configuration system. And the output of the machine learning is then. 
a model of a, a context, uh, the model of context dependent recommendations. So, which means that uh, the model tells us for a specific user with uh, specific requirements, uh, the following variable settings should be recommended. So, that's the idea here. Satisfiability prediction, the input could be, uh, again, a history of CSP meta information and uh, corresponding uh, satisfiability information and uh, the output could be kind of a classification model depending on the input. Uh, is this uh, problem solvable uh, or not for the current, current CSP? Search optimization, so the, uh, the input for the machine learning could be a um, history of CSP solutions, for example, uh, configurations, and the output could be a model of uh, context-dependent uh, search heuristics that help to, to optimize and, and uh, minimize uh, the, the search effort uh, for a CSP. So that's um, an overview, so it's a set of uh, basic uh, tasks and um, quite representative if we take a look at uh, the, the ongoing work in this area. So now there are different approaches or perspective of how, perspectives of how to integrate machine learning into constraint solving. The first one is uh, a kind of uh, direct uh, machine learning application. So for example, uh, in the context of uh, knowledge-based configuration, uh, values or variable values uh, could be determined by a neural network and uh, these uh, these values can be uh, directly proposed to the user which means that these variables or these settings can be uh, directly integrated as uh, variable assignments into the uh, configuration process so that's that's one way um, of integrating uh, machine learning with constraint solving. The danger behind that is for sure that machine learning is in the general case not uh, constraint aware. This is extremely important. So it could be the case in this scenario that machine learning provides recommendations which uh, induce an inconsistency. Uh, then we have the two-layered approach which means that uh, the machine learning results are uh, again available, but these are uh, given to a constraint solver in a kind of indirect fashion. So machine learning could could learn uh, relevant uh, variable settings, so, so in, especially in, in recommendation scenarios, but then uh, the result of the machine learning uh, process is given to uh, a constraint solving process, for example, in, in terms of uh, search heuristics, so variable value orderings could be uh, given to a solver. This, if the solver is complete, this uh, assures or helps to assure uh, completeness and uh, the identification of a solution. So the problem we have with direct machine learning is not existing uh, in this sense if we use um, a two-layered approach. Uh, we also have this aspect of uh, semantic penalties, which is uh, highly relevant. Uh, so what do I mean with semantic penalties? So we can uh, further improve uh, the machine learning quality uh, if we are able to include uh, constraints from the CSP definition, so constraints uh, from the knowledge base uh, directly into machine learning, for example, uh, to integrate uh, constraints in one way or another as um, additional um, components in, the, in an optimization function of a machine learning algorithm. This works quite well, for example, in the context of neural networks or uh, in the context of uh, matrix factorization. So this is one way uh, of integrating uh, constraints with machine learning. So con putting constraints directly uh, into the machine learning process, into the algorithm in order to assure uh, an improved prediction quality, for example. Uh, another uh, approach of integration is to uh, include uh, background knowledge or semantic knowledge, not in the optimization function, but uh, directly into the machine learning uh, model. And there is ongoing work of how to integrate uh, uh, rules, uh, logical expressions uh, directly into uh, a neural network model. 
In this uh, overview, I'm uh, focusing on the first two aspects. So I'm, I'm not focusing on, on how to uh, extend optimization functions with the semantic penalties and, and how to extend neural networks with um, declarative uh, knowledge. So this is uh, out of the scope of uh, this presentation. It's uh, in one way or another uh, discussed in the overview paper. Uh, so the reference is included at the end of uh, the slides or yeah, so. So what we see here is a simple example of a, a direct uh, machine learning application. So we have uh, solver sessions. Uh, what we see here is uh, different uh, parameter settings for uh, the uh, so it's, it's basically the meta parameters of the solver, uh, meta parameters of the problem. So the CSP structure, the variable structure, uh, constraint structure. Um, depending on the input, we see. Uh, the solver that has been selected and uh, the corresponding runtime. So we can use the data set here uh, for a, a new session, uh, for a new problem with uh, a given set of uh, metaparameters to uh, predict, um, for example, the runtime, but we can also uh, use uh, this model to uh, predict uh, the solver uh, or recommend the solver that should be used. So to be predicted, so one aspect is here, uh, the runtime for uh, the current session. So we have the current session and we have the completed session, uh, completed sessions, and then we can use uh, a, a machine learning approach. So in the simplest way, we could use, for example, a nearest neighbor based approach, but for sure there are different other ways uh, uh, to solve this problem. And so we can assume here, for example, we have uh, two nearest neighbors uh, with two different uh, solver selections. What we also see is that uh, solver 2 for a very uh, similar problem uh, has a much uh, better performance. So in this uh, situation, this scenario, we could uh, recommend solver 2. Um, Yes, so this is a, a very simple example, uh, in this case, uh, described on the basis of uh, a nearest neighbor based approach, but for sure different other uh, machine learning approaches can be used uh, to build um, a corresponding model and to help to select the most appropriate solver in the current context. Uh, the problem can also be uh, tackled on the basis of uh, a neural network architecture. So with what we see here is a basic uh, feed-forward uh, neural network. Uh, so uh, we have um, uh, the task is solver selection. So the neural networks uh, help us uh, to figure out which uh, of the solvers is uh, the relevant one or the appropriate one in the current setting. And uh, the neural networks help. The neural network helps us uh, to take this decision on um, the, a set of uh, basic properties describing a, a constraint uh, satisfaction problem. So that's uh, the basic underlying idea. Another example of um, uh, applying direct uh, machine learning. So directly applying the results of machine learning. Uh, is the following one. So we have um, a kind of uh, configuration scenario. Uh, we have a current user. The user has already specified a set of, uh, let's say, requirements. As already mentioned, so in the, in the simplest uh, case, we can interpret those uh, requirements as constraints. And we are interested in answering the question, uh, what is the value the user will select for the variable x5? So again, for demonstration purposes, we uh, apply a very simple uh, machine learning model, which is based on uh, the nearest neighbor approach. So we have uh, identified user one as uh, the nearest neighbor of user current. So the uh, requirements of both users are uh, quite similar. And we see that the nearest neighbor has uh, selected the value three. So we will recommend uh, three uh, to the uh, current user. So a very simple example. Uh, what we are trying to uh, recommend here is, um, or predict here is uh, what the user will select, what the user will like. In the other case, uh, the goal was, or the focus was on uh, predicting 
uh, figuring out uh, the most um, uh, relevant solver or the solver that should be used to uh, solve the problem as uh, fast as possible. So what we see here now is an uh, example of a, a two-layered approach. Um, what we the, the machine learning approach we apply here is uh, matrix factorization. So we have um, a kind of data set, so uh, which user selected which uh, variable values. Zero means uh, not selected, one means selected. So um, for example, user one selected uh, value two of uh, variable x1. The encoding we see here is a so-called uh, uh, one-hot encoding and zero means a value has uh, not been selected. So the idea now of matrix factorization is uh, the following. So what we would like to do is to find an um, approximation R uh, prime uh, uh, that uh, approximates the original matrix R uh, as good as possible. So R prime is uh, the matrix uh, multiplication, uh, so the product of the two matrix matrices uh, U and V. And uh, so U describes uh, the connection between uh, uh, user preferences or, or user constraints and um, a set of hidden features known from uh, matrix factorization. And on the other hand, uh, the matrix V then uh, describes the relationship between uh, the hidden features and uh, the variable values. What we can achieve with this approach that we are also able to predict or estimate uh, user preferences with regard to variable values uh, the user uh, did not select up to now. So. The goal of matrix factorization in this context is, as already said, to uh, minimize the distance between entries in R and um, R prime. And we can use this approach uh, for learning basic uh, variable uh, value orderings. So table four represents uh, the matrix R prime. So we see that we have a kind of uh, prediction for uh, variable values uh, the users did not select. So let us assume we have a current user who already selected some uh, variable values. So in a, in a simple model we can uh, search for the nearest neighbor in the in the uh, matrix R prime. Uh, take a look at uh, the predictions here and then basically derive from these predictions a kind of uh, variable value ordering which can then be uh, passed to the constraint solver and the constraint solver can then um, perform a reasoning on the basis of this uh, learned ordering. For sure it's a basic approach but uh, this uh, basic principle can apply it in, in many different maybe uh, more complex settings. This is now an, uh, an overview of basic uh, evaluation criteria that can be used to evaluate uh, the outcome, uh, the quality of uh, a machine learning model. We uh, do not have the time to discuss all these uh, criteria or metrics in detail. So precision, for example, is um, a measure often used in the context of uh, uh, recommendation. So if a configurator is able to recommend specific uh, variable settings, precision as an evaluation metric might, uh, makes, might make sense. So precision means uh, the share of true positive uh, in relation to uh, true positive uh, and false positive uh, predictions. Minimality could make sense, for example, in the context of uh, diagnosis algorithms or diagnosis predictions. So minimality would mean here it's uh, the share of relevant constraints uh, in relation to the number of relevant constraints and the number uh, of irrelevant constraints part of a uh, prediction. Fairness could be uh, a measure in the context of uh, group decision scenarios. So it would be kind of uh, user-wise share of accepted requirements uh, versus the total number of requirements um, defined by the user. So the task of diagnosis prediction is uh, basically to identify 
uh, changes or minimal changes to the original uh, set of requirements in such a way that inconsistent requirements can be uh, converted into consistent ones. As you might know, when we apply or if we apply the concepts of uh, model-based diagnosis, in many cases there are many different ways to resolve uh, the conflicts and the principles uh, we have uh, discussed up to now. For example, in terms of uh, learning variable value orderings, uh, these principles can also be used to identify uh, constraint orderings or, or uh, re user requirement orderings in such a way that the, the, the outcome of a diagnosis process is a set of uh, requirements, a set of uh, settings uh, that uh, are somehow or in one way or another also uh, accepted uh, by the user. So also in diagnosis scenario we can apply uh, the concepts we uh, have discussed in the in the previous slides. So in our overview paper we have identified a couple of machine learning approaches in the context of uh, constraint solving. The machine learning techniques that have been applied are the decision trees and uh, random forest, case-based reasoning, neural networks, deep learning, uh, online and uh, reinforcement learning, genetic algorithms, uh, clustering, uh, different regression approaches and uh, also nearest neighbor approaches including uh, matrix factorization. The tasks or representative example tasks are uh, recommendation, uh, prediction of satisfiability, uh, supporting solution search and uh, also supporting diagnosis tasks and this basic uh, tasks are, are supported by different uh, kind of uh, machine learning approaches. We do not have the time to discuss here in detail. So one example is uh, the recommendation of variable values, which is based on matrix factorization, which is uh, supervised machine learning. We have algorithm selection, also uh, a kind of uh, supervised machine learning approach. We have uh, online learning of uh, variable selection heuristics, which is uh, unsupervised machine learning. And finally, also uh, the learning of uh, uh, relevances of uh, user requirements which is uh, a kind of supervised machine learning approaches uh, to summarize in our literature study we we figured out or, or saw that uh, the majority of the approaches in this context are based on, on supervised machine learning so what are example uh, research issues from my point of view it's uh, semantic enhanced uh, machine learning which uh, is uh, rather important, especially in the con when, when we want to combine machine learning with constraint solving. So we have to analyze um, different variants of uh, integrating uh, semantic properties into the uh, loss function of deep learning uh, based uh, approaches. So uh, the, the uh, optimization functions uh, should be extended and um, take into account uh, constraints defined in the constraint satisfaction problem. So we have to analyze this in more detail. Uh, this helps us to develop machine learning methods that also work with small size data sets, which is one of the uh, big issues in, in big data in, in deep learning. So these approaches are basically in the need of large data sets and having this uh, semantic enhancement will also allow us to uh, develop more uh, smart networks, not only relying on, on large data sets. Uh, solver competitions that do not, let's say, only focus on the prediction of satisfiability or uh, optimization in terms of efficiency. So we would, it would also be nice to see some uh, competitions that are also focusing on uh, algorithmic uh, prediction quality and finally what we see as an important topic here uh, is also sampling methods that help us to to optimize uh, the behavior of a constraint solver even if uh, data sets uh, are not available as a, as a basis for applying the supervised machine learning to conclude this talk uh, so it uh, becomes obvious that uh, machine learning helps to improve uh, constraint solving in, in various uh, aspects. Uh, in this talk, we uh, try to discuss example tasks such as uh, predicting satisfiability or predicting 
uh, relevant user requirements and uh, preferences. Uh, what is also uh, somehow um, an outcome of our literature analysis is that an uh, additional focus on prediction quality, especially in interactive settings, is needed. So we also somehow need this um, recommendation functionality in the context of constraints holding. And for sure, there are many open research issues in this highly interdisciplinary area. I want to thank you and also thank you again for uh, inviting me to give this presentation. And I'm now hoping to be able to answer your questions.